all-time hottest male cartoon character is... Did it work? You did it! Yep. Awesome. So this is my first live stream ever. People are uh, so helpful on YouTube. Yeah. I was asking like really big channels like Black Nerd and he wrote me back. I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. The YouTube community is kind of a, is, a, is an interesting, it's it's an interesting mix. It's it's a really big, big ocean, you know, like I was really, really excited to, um, I was really excited when, when, when Blip first started to falter, which is of course like where a bunch of us from the Channel Awesome started. Um, I kept thinking, I'd go to YouTube. That looks like, this is a really so cool. So you were doing this before on, YouTube. Not before YouTube, um, but a bunch of us who were on the That Guy with the Glasses forums and a lot of us who came out of that were using Blip because Blip was reliable. It didn't have copyright bots. Is that and how you make girl? Hey, out, Spader. Hmm? Is that how you make girl? It is. Oh, cool. It is. A bunch of us met. A bunch of us met there, actually. He was one of um, my first YouTube friends. I love girl. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guru's great. He's actually like, you know, hanging out asleep. We saw a movie earlier today, vlogged about cool. it. Uh, that vlog is going up in his channel, I think, probably tomorrow. Awesome. I love his vlogs. Okay, yeah. Spoiler. He gives me a spoiler alert, so I know I can watch it safely. Yeah, we, we, we tried it. We wanted to do that because we know that the ma vast majority of people will just watch the video anyway. But the people who wa just want to know, is this movie worth my time based on everything I know about this particular reviewer? They they were going to want the chance to see the movie as fresh as possible, mm -hmm. you know. And so, yeah, so we just started doing that. You know, I like we came up with the idea that uh, that spoiler bumper, each of each one of us has a different one. Mm -hmm. Like his has the uh, the gonk from Day of the Dead playing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, mine is just whatever music I think is interesting at the time that is not yeah. copy if i do spoilers i kind of put them at the end but um i usually only put a warning for the newer release ones because like we did omen a while back and i was like well, yeah, if you haven't seen that oh omen, you can't see, no if you haven't seen the omen that's like come on if you that's, haven't seen the omen like why are you watching the review old. they're like why are you watching this channel like yeah to me the moratorium has always been has been two years yeah, I figure, like, you know, horror addicts, like we did Friday the 13th Part 2. Like, if you like horror, you've oh, seen yeah. Friday the 13th Part 2. So, oh, yeah. if we give you a spoiler, we always say spoilers, there will be. But, um, yeah. but you know, I, I assume if you like the kind of movies I like, then you've seen Friday the 13th Part 2. I mean, my 11-year-old's my seen Friday the 13th Part 2. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Friday That's his favorite. Like, he didn't like Part well, 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't like well, Part 4 because it's got boobs. That's going to totally change in four years. Yeah, that's totally going like, to change. Can we fast forward the skinny dipping scene? Awesome. He's no, he's going to reach a point where he's going to be like, he's, he's going to reach, he's going to reach two points. And it's an awkward moment for any, um, this actually depends. If he's heterosexual, there are two seminal, uh, boob moments for a young boy. One of them is very positive, And that's the moment you realize that you're attracted to them. The other is a little bit more, oh, which is when you realize your mom has them. Uh, I also think it's because mom's in the room watching them. I, I've told them, like, it is totally yeah, it okay does. to like boobs. It's totally fine. You don't need to talk about it with me. I'm not going to make it awkward. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. That's, you that's need, how you he do. He doesn't need to tell me that, you know, oh, gosh, that's no. I'm like, I'm not going to judge you, dude. I was a little kid, too. You know, I had impure yeah. thoughts about Chris Sarandon and Fright Night as a child. So I've been there. Oh, man, Chris Sarandon and Fright Night. He God, was, he was hot. You know, yeah. Fucking hot. I remember my brothers were so excited about their first boobs. Like, they didn't go through that. They saw a species. And they're like, hey, Haley, we saw boobs. So I'm like, all right, guys. Because we're, like, the same age. So Oh, I was, man. I Totally Chris Sarandon looks can look awesome in a fucking he looks awesome in a sweater vest. He a pink amazing. sweater vest of all goddamn things. He like you you know a list of guys I wanna like horror icons yeah. I wanna meet. He's phenomenal. But yeah, Chris Sarandon. Yeah. And then also I remember I watched it way too young, and I watched a lot of horror movies young, but I saw Boxing Helena when I was like Oh oh boxing uh, like Helena. Twelve? And I was like, oh, this is kind of uh, 
I, I, don't, I don't know how I'm feeling about this. Oh my! I know exactly how I feel about boxing Helena, I which do was now. how. Yeah, which is which is this? How dare you make it a dream? How oh, dare that, that was you. the bullshit part. But like when it's, you're 12, you're like, okay, part. there's girls getting cut up and there's all this really sexual stuff. And you know, it's kind of like a sexy movie, but you're 12. Oh, so yeah. Oh, yeah. You're not quite processing that. You're like, oh, yeah, no, know. that. Well, when that movie came out, I think I was already like 15. So I was, I fully understood what was going on. You know, it's like, oh, no, I, I get this. I get this. I get everything that's happening. And but the big problem with Boxing Helen is you get to the end and you're like, bullshit. You know, yeah. I call bullshit. Have you gone back and watched any movies you saw when you were a kid, though, and you realize there's so oh, much there that you didn't notice the first time around? Uh, basically every movie I love. Yes. Um, like, for instance, like like I've, I've gone on record as saying like the seminal horror movie for me, the one that I saw as a kid that changed my life. Most people, it was Aliens. For me, it was John Carpenter's The Thing. Like, I was seven years old. My dad shouldn't have let me see it, but I saw it anyway. And the minute the dog's head split open, I completely freaked out. And I walked out of that movie a different person. Like, that, it wrecked me. But the thing I like about the thing that I didn't notice the first time is all the times when someone is talking to Kurt Russell and you realize going back, oh, shit, that, that's the alien. That's the thing talking. You know, like when the guy is going, hey, Watch him, watch ah. him close. Like that's the thing that the thing has taken him over. There's another moment where a guy's like, "No, don't give me a gun," because the thing doesn't know how to use a gun. Yes, you know, and you're like, "Oh, oh, I see what's happening." Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the. Uh, ah. I think it is it is it Arrow Video that's. No, it's Scream Factory. No, it's Scream Factory. Factory They've got doing... um, the big release coming up. I really want that. And did you know they're doing Carrie as well? Yeah, yeah, they're doing Carrie as well. I love pro- Carrie and... so much. Great. Carrie's so fantastic. I've been Carrie, like, for three Halloweens now. I made my own blood. And the first year I overdid it, it was extra sticky. And we went oh, to a man. party. Danny and I did. Oh, my gosh. Danny's costume was the best. He was Candyman. And, and his costume wasn't racist because oh, oh. he had an Obama mask. And we got him this coat. And we put Beazle over. It was the best. And the best part is Tony Todd follows us on Twitter. And I've shown it to him. Oh, and he I love liked Tony it. Todd. He's amazing. And he's such yeah, a cool guy. He's really cool. But my costume, I had you know, the blood all over me. You got this cheap dress at Goodwill. And Danny took the bucket and he literally just dumped it on me. And it was so sticky that you could put my beer on my arm and it would it would just hang there. Oh, man. Awesome. Yeah, love Carrie. But when I was a yeah. kid, I saw that one. God, my mom was reading the book, and I was, I remember, was like, she told me I was like six, and I was asking her about it. I used to get so fascinated by the stories, and I'd watch the movie, and I'd be scared, scared to death. But you know, I'd be like, oh, tell me more about this, because she'd always read me these little bits of like her Stephen King books, and I would think they were fascinating. And we finally watched it, and the part that really scared me was the end when uh, it's the dream sequence where Carrie's hand pops out. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I used to run and take like, this giant leap to get to my bed because I thought Carrie's hand was going to come out and grab me. And my bedroom was on the second floor. So she'd be like jumping on the couch. I, I read somewhere that uh, you are not considered a small YouTube channel anymore when you're at 10,000. Really? So really? You're almost there. Oh, man, there. we're, we're about to, we're like about to hit that moment. You're like a celebrity now. Are you still going to talk to us little guys when you're, you're a big celebrity? As long as we get along, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like uh, there are some look there's some there's some Lewin. people on there's some you know people who blew up YouTube fast that, have you met he's a really nice guy it's chris dandridge from uh found flicks like yeah I talking yeah to guy when he was at like 3k and now he's huge yeah yeah but he's yeah. still hella nice he's gonna do like a collab with us or something he's so freaking busy oh sweet that's but awesome he is a really nice dude god he blew up fast have you have you seen um uh, stitched together pictures. Yes, I started following yeah. him when he was at like three k. I found it by accident because his his profile image on there always made me think it was like a like a metal one, which I like metal, but I, you know I don't follow a lot of metal YouTube shows. But I got right. it by accident. I was just like, this is fucking phenomenal. Like I made Danny. We've watched them all. We've watched them all on flaws. 
he put so much work into all of those those videos, and I just I, I love him. I love him so yeah. much. Yeah, there was I a period of time where he was pumping good out Andy of the. Andy is every, just the most adorable thing. Yeah, yeah, stitched together pictures. It's a guy with like um, who's like wrapped up in like a fucking straight jacket with like bandages over his face. His reviews are great. His camera work is fantastic. And there was a period of time when he was pumping out a video every like that every two weeks. He was. Yeah, and that was incredible. He's doing the mani- maniacal cinephile now, which I, I'm enjoying. It's yeah, yeah, because well, he needed to do something that it's was still, a I little mean, easier. The boots to reboots. I mean, like a lot of people don't know. Like you guys, like I've had people tell me, you know, where's that video? And it looks like it doesn't take a lot of time, especially our videos, which are not not the best on YouTube. But God, editing videos takes for freaking ever. And so when I see something like his, yeah. I'm just like Jesus, like our girls, uh, blood splattered cinema. Or your satanic cinema, you're like, oh shit, that took like a month. That had to have taken forever. Yeah, yeah. The um, the oh god, Night of the Creeps. Yeah, we filmed Night of the Creeps here actually. Um, and he was Guru was cursing me because like we were, we went through that script so many times because every time he was like, it's not quite right, it's not quite right, it's not quite right, and I would read it and I go, no, you're right, man, it's not quite right. Like we need something. It needs something stupid to happen. And that's when we came up with Tom Atkins mustache saves the day. And that was the line. And he was like, well, how would we do that? Yeah. Throw me. And I was like, all right, how do we do that? And the only thing I could think of is actually just building a mustache costume. And I would run into the door, run in through the door, say, thrill me, shoot someone. I would put that scene together because it, it was, it was an effect shot. And I'm the guy that does the effect shots. Uh, and I think it was totally worth it. In fact, the mustache is probably going to be a, a reoccurring whenever we do Tom, a-, a movie that got Tom Atkins in it. Oh, um, in yeah. fact, I'd love to meet him too, but I've never met, gotten to meet Tom Atkins. I've met He's one of the guys I've never people. met. Like I've met Ken Hodder multiple times, but I've never met Tom Atkins. Oh my God. Have you ever met Derek Mears? Yes. He is a doll. Whoa. Oh, yeah, he's huge. He's oh, gigantic. Yeah. No, I mean, like, he's just sweet. I mean, he's he is. a giant. I have a picture of him with with me, and I'm not sure. I'm 5'5", five, five, but or 5'6". And uh, he's, like, like way up here. So, yeah, he is tall. And and the best part is, yeah. is Lols is beside me. So Lols is, like, up to his, like, his knees. <laughs> the man is tall. The man's a giant, but he yeah, is yeah. the sweetest person ever. Um, one, he, he like, is. He, I, I usually like will like buy the autograph first and stuff, but I was so excited to see him. I got like kind of starstruck because I actually like the remake. I know a lot a lot of people don't like it, but I liked it. I thought he did a good job. I really the only problem I when... have with the remake is that it's it, it, it's nothing we really haven't seen before. I like I... that um, when they were doing, it, they asked themselves, "Okay, is Jason supernatural or not?" And they decided he wasn't, and they yeah, came up with a viable way to make it work. And yeah, yeah. There's a lot of tributes there to the movies, but what I really liked was um, Derek Mears' performance. He was so dedicated to that. He didn't talk to anybody else in the cast. He listened to that no. Man Behind the Mask song by Alice Cooper, like, nonstop. Like, he was so jazzed to play it, like how most guys would be about playing Batman. And to just see somebody playing this role, somebody who loves it as much as I love it, makes me super excited. Makes made me a huge fan of him. And he's on Holliston and... He's oh, just, I, love a, I love Holliston. I'm so glad someone else but, has seen Holliston. Yeah, he is the sweetest guy ever. Just really, really sweet. He is. I was actually, I actually had the privilege of being at the first horror convention he ever went to. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it was a convention in Sacramento. And um, I believe it was, was it From the Land Beyond? I think it was From the Land Beyond uh, was the name of the show. They, they don't throw it anymore. They have a different one that they do. Um, but... He was there. This is during the period of time when I was a production artist. Or I illustrator, rather. I was an illustrator. And there's Derek Mears. And I'm like, wait, is that the guy that played Jason? They're like, and, you know, and the guy who ran the con, who was my buddy, went like my buddy Anthony, for those who remember my stories about Anthony from the other stream. Um, Anthony goes like, yeah, this is his first convention, dude. And I'm like, so oh, my God. How did you see Was he just adorable? Here? Was he excited He's to have all his He guy in the world. Like, he was so happy to just meet people who had seen That's the remake the of Friday the 13th. That's the because you meet some of the, yeah. oh, it's really, like, I think probably the most 
awkward one as there was at Crypticon, which I know you've been to, Crypticon Seattle. Yeah. Crypticon. They had a Nightmare on Elm Street reunion. And you know conventions are expensive. It, oh, at yeah. At best, maybe $20 an autograph, but you got to kind of budget it out. You got to figure out yeah. what you're running. I wasn't buying tons of books and stuff. Like, I got to budget my money out. We're going to this Nightmare on Elm Street table. You've got Heather Langenkamp and just all these amazing people. And I can't even fucking remember his name, but you know the karate guy? You know, his uh, face was like a meatball in part five. Oh, yes. He's yes. there. And he's like like begging us, like practically begging us to buy an autograph. And I'm just like, oh, God, dude, this is awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're making this weird, yes. dude. It's like, no. you're making this weird. And I am the uber horror fan. You're like supposed to be like this cool celebrity. Oh, guy. man. You ever you want to know awkward? OK, so for the longest time, the guy that played little Michael Myers in the Rob Zombie remake. Oh, yeah. He was also in Hancock, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. There's nothing wrong with that kid. But what was really super awkward about it is that until he was 18, he had to go everywhere with his mom and his mom made everything really awkward. Because you were just like, hey, kid, I fucking love you. You did a good job at fucking his Rob Zombie's Halloween, man. You know, but then you'd have to talk to his mom and you're like, uh, I'm sorry. This is really about your son, not you. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was really awkward. Um, another one that got awkward, but it wasn't the celebrity's fault at all, was the guy that played Frank in Donnie Darko. The guy I've who played him the a couple bunny. times. Oh yeah, yeah, he's great. He was also in Independence Day. Fan- yeah, yeah, he's great. And he's, he's um, fantastic. You might know him because you you've been to Krypton, but my friend Eric and him are pretty good friends. Oh sweet, sweet. So, yeah, I really like him. Cool guy. Yeah, you know, he is. But his manager for a short period of time. Oh my god, that guy was an asshole. It was one of those things where we were like. Are, are they he's he's demanding all this he's this, this manager is coming up yeah this manager is coming up and this agent is coming up and demanding all this shit from people like and like i said i knew because i knew the guy who ran the show he's like i'm getting all these weird requests from people and he's mm-hmm. fucking like creeping on every all, all the female attendees what do i do and um one guy is like go right to the celebrity and so he goes right to him and he's like wait what happened and at, he fired him on the spot Oh. He fired him on the spot. He's like, no, you do not come to these shows. You do not treat people like this. And you do yeah. not make demands um, of people that I did I not make. God, um, I am drawing a total blank right now. But, you know, the final boy of A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, his handler was like, I was having a conversation oh, with yeah. him. And he was talking about his documentary coming up. And the guy kept interrupting to be like, so his autographs are like this much. I'm like, okay, dude, I gotcha. I gotcha. You know, yeah, so. like one of the interviews that we didn't get, yeah, when we went to Days of the Dead was Feruza Balk. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we were supposed, it was I one of those weird things. Her. I love yeah, yeah, yeah. craft. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she she looks, I mean, she's obviously older, but not like, she still looks great. You know, she's still obviously Feruza Balk. I Bulk. had a, a mad girl crush on her in high school. Oh, my God, I had a huge crush on her. Like, like Feruza oh. Balk. And I was a little goth girl in high school, so she was like my hero. So I was like, oh, sweet. Yeah, well, it's it's weird. Like, Frusa Bulk, body type wise, completely not my type, utterly not my type. But I had a huge crush on her. Like, she's everybody's got that one person or a couple that is like, not my type. But if they oh, just smiled, I, I, the answer is totally yes. not my type. But for reasons unknown, I had like this massive crush last forever with Chris O'Donnell. Like, not my type at all. I mean, look who I Oh, married. my God. But uh, he was in Batman Forever, and I just had the, the craziest crush on him. And now I'm just like, what? Well, what I can see about? I can see why he's like, he's a very, like, you know, very handsome guy. You was, know, I like, think it's just that character that I ended up uh, watching. I watched more of his movies than I watched Son of a Woman, and I loved that. So, yeah, I actually kind of want him to, like, come back and like. He's maybe... on a TV show right now. I don't oh, watch which it. One? Ah, oh, shit. It's one of those, like, procedural cop ones. Oh, I, f- I think he should come back and, like, play a superhero. I would love... To, I mean, he was all physically, you know, ready to do so, and... Yeah, he did I, I wonder... It's did unfortunate he, wonder, that Batman and Robin killed that for him, because he did a great job in Batman Forever. I know, but I think if he... I think if now 
Ben Affleck went to him and went, hey, Chris O'Donnell, I know you played Robin in the past. How would you like to play Nightwing? Oh, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Dude. Great. Oh, you know, okay, so here's the awkward thing. Have you ever had, this is going to make me sound really freaking weird. Have you had cartoon crushes? Yes, and I will tell you who it was. My cartoon crush. You're not getting out of this. Was a character on the She-Ra cartoon. <gasps> I love She-Ra. Yeah, yeah. It was Mermista the Mermaid. I had the biggest fucking crush on that character. Oh, dude. Yeah, like, and I had, and I was dating this. Uh, at one point, I dated this girl, um, Renee, who I loved very much. We ultimately didn't work out. How old were you? I'm sorry. How old was I? I think, I think She-Ra, and I remember being like five. Uh, I was fucking 15, 15, oh. 16. All right. I was like, dude, you're a straight up pimp when you were five. Like, yeah. 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 A little bit younger than me. And like, he was a straight up pimp when he was five and he'd go around and I was like, uh, his, uh, power wheel and check out chicks, non boobs. Like I've heard the stories. So <laughs> he's like <laughs> yeah, three apparently, years younger apparently, than me too. Apparently when I was a little kid, I was really popular with, with, with the, the ladies. ladies, but I I just assume that's because I was like a little baby, you know. Yeah, I was like the biggest dork up until like like kind of now. <laughs> <laughs> Going back, because you oh, said back. cartoon crushes, and I admitted that I had a crush on a cartoon mermaid named Mermista, and 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 let me go on for that for a while because that was the that was the first cartoon character I noticed had. Boobs. boobs yeah because i was like whoa and this this creates an indelible imprint on my fucking mind and now if i see a mermaid and she doesn't have huge tits i'm like that ain't right mm. so um how do you feel about ariel the little mermaid Ari how do i feel about ariel the little, little mermaid um she needs a steak sandwich that's how i feel <laughs> um other than that yeah, like Ursula. you how about Ursula? <laughs> Ursula needs to work on a treadmill. Like, we got two extremes going in here. We got to meet somewhere in the middle. Oh, what other mermaids are there? Um, well, uh, if you are a fan of Beards. comic book erotica, and I am, uh, there are plenty of, like, big titty mermaid fucking comics. Because apparently I'm not the only one who is wired that way. I read a lot of comics. I don't know if I've read a lot of erotica comics, but I've read some comics that had erotica in them. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever, well, have you ever read anything by um, uh, Milo Manara? No, I haven't. Okay. Is this he's an, like a He's like an a Italian manga? artist. Uh, what? Are we talking like mangas here? No, no, no. He's an Italian artist. Okay. He does a lot of stuff for heavy metal mag that, that gets published. Oh, Danny metal would know. Danny would know. He's most likely. Okay, if he's a fan of heavy metal magazine, he yeah. probably knows Milo Manara. Just is like that he the artist? Because I am familiar Rio. with the artwork. I did like that one artist too, uh, Luis. Luis Royo. Yes, he's amazing. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's fantastic. He has a lot of boobs. He does. He does. He has a lot of boobs. Um, my 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 favorite, like I think, artist per um. Uh, Per boob poundage, I guess you'd say, would probably be Frank Frazetta. Who's that? Oh my God. You don't know Frank Frazetta? Holy crap. You know Frank Frazetta even if you don't know him. Probably. Uh, he Maybe. did a lot of Conan covers. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like, look his name up at some point. Frank Frazetta. He was. The thing that set his fantasy art apart is that he liked his. Alfie women wants to know what comic book erotica is. Well, comic book, it's it, it's comic it's comic books that got porn in it. It's comic book porn, Alfie. Yeah, it's comic book porn, Alfie. <laughs> it's got fucking, it's got naked ladies in it, yeah. naked dudes sometimes. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Frank Frazetta was into like kind of, you know, what we would term politely as voluptuous women, but in the common parnat parlance, it would be girls who were just thick. And they, god damn it, I fucking loved that shit. I love Frank Rosetta. Danny watched The Little Mermaid in slow to, slow mode to see if there's any uh, nudity in it. I think he's talking about when she arrived uh -uh. on the beach and she's wearing that, like, sail. Huh? Yeah, also, yeah, part Prince of your Eric world. Prince Eric was hot, hot as fuck, dude. Prince Eric. <sighs> oh, man, so that, that was your jam? Uh, actually, uh, this is really... 
Now, I, yeah, here's where we go because I was about to say I just I just admitted to my uh, okay, love so of cartoon mermaid. You gotta one, go. It's your turn. My first one I would have to say was probably Donatello from the Ninja Turtles, which okay. makes me sound like a super freak because he's not even human. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. We're, but, we're skirting the the border of furry he had right that there. Good you know? mix of he, you know, he's kind of short, which is kind of my type, and he's you know pretty well built. But he's a nerd, and he's he does machines. Like I don't he even does know what that. Machines. I don't even I, know what that means, but it sounds exciting. I I know what you mean. <laughs> A friend of mine who actually does write erotica for a living. And I'm like, okay, everyone's like, okay, you have to tell me what the erotic fixation with machines that do the work is. That's, I would be worried about a malfunction. Well, this is what she said. Do you know who you don't have to ask that question of? Any woman who, while doing the laundry, leaned over at just the right moment while turning a dial. See, okay, I am a woman, Jack, and I'm going to tell you yeah, a different story. Yeah, there you story. go. Jack? Okay, go okay. for it. So, when I was, you know, back in the day, and I was a single mom in college, so I didn't have time to fucking date. So, I had, you know, a tool. Oh, jeez, second mom. It. Oh, man, and it was fucking amazing. Rough. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. Like, I, because I couldn't date all through college because I had a, a little baby. I, I, I invested in a heavy-duty tool. I called it Mace Window because it was purple. It was like this big. It had these like beads that would like rotate, and it had this thingy here that looked like a dolphin. And then this part. Oh man! Hey man, man! I think. Hold on, hold on. I think I know which one you're talking about. Um. Uh. Uh. Do 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 do. Let me let me let me look it up. But yeah. So where I'm going with this, and why I don't trust machines, is on a night when the child was at his desk. I'm like, you know, I'm alone. I don't have a social life because I'm a mom in college. Right. Get out. It actually blew up on me. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I got burned some places you are not supposed to get burned. Oh no! It oh popped. no! And then all this smoke came out of it. Oh and no! It was really oh. high, and I cannot believe I just told that story on YouTube. Oh my god, that's so, I don't. Well, I mean, me. obviously you recovered. Everything's okay. I, I'm good. I'm good. Good. Okay. All right. Yeah. Because. Jeez, like I Good whoa. Touch. Well, you know, I also have two brothers and grew up in a military base, so yeah. Oh man. Oh. Wow. Whoa. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that creates a different dynamic. That's a that's cool. Um and they were all military guys. Your dad was military? My dad was in the Air Force. Uh, my mom's English. So my dad went over to okay. England. He met my mom. We ra- were raised from the base, popped all over England, and then when I was 10, uh, my dad left and we had to come to America. So I got to ask. All right. So this is going way back, back oh in the gosh. time. But all right. So. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, you told me. You told me. It was Donatello. Yes. Your, your- Favorite cartoon crushes of all time are, God, I can't remember his name right now. Uh, the guy from Batman Beyond. Yeah, Terry McGillis. From yes. what? Batman Beyond. Oh, Batman Beyond. And okay, yeah. the all time hottest male cartoon character is. Professor Utonium. Okay, check it. I thought, he, okay, he's okay. He's a single dad. He's a scientist. He's a good job. He has a really cute house in a good neighborhood. He's super nice and polite. He's the best, and he's wicked hot. <laughs> I bet man, it's everything I'm not, you know? <laughs> I bet he is ripped under that lab coat. I tell you, Professor Utonium. Well, it's it's, it's going to be like groundskeeper Willie. <laughs> well, grease me up, woman. <laughs> Yeah, he's the best. But now the worst, uh, the worst cartoon crush story I have is I had this guy who was like my best friend. You know, it's like your best friend and you kind of fall in love with him when you're a little kid and you think that they can do no wrong. And yeah. I loved him. He loved Mrs. Frisbee from the Rats and Nim. So I was like, bitch, it's on. But not really because I was like a pacifist. So I was like, oh, yeah, she does got it going on. Like that messed me up. Uh, <laughs> like I was sitting here like, God, I wish I could be more like Miss Frisbee. She's got it all. <laughs> she goes in crazy. For real? Yeah, he had the biggest crush on her. And I, oh, I like I read the book and I'm just like, ah, oh, dude, she is cool. Never gonna be that cool. That's 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 well that's that we've crossed she past. She is three, like the, three, the, the epitome right of like the badass there. single mom though. So but yeah, now I'm just like, what, Miss Frisbee? Like, yeah. dude, that bitch was old. Pick a younger <laughs> rat. Uh Oh man. 
No, no, no. Oh, actually, you know that now that you mentioned it, if we go that far back, if we go back into time, yeah, Princess Daphne. I had a thing for Princess Daphne. Princess Daphne. Yeah. Um, Daphne. Daphne. Dragon's Lair? Uh-uh. What? I don't, you don't know do Dragon's okay, Lair. Okay, 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 see how there's a commonality oh my God. here? I don't do Conan or Xena Warrior Princess or dragons or mermaids. Fairies, unless they're what? fairies that kidnap kids. Oh God! Yeah, no, you're not allowed to not know who Princess Daphne is. No, we're <laughs> correcting this this error, this omission oh. in your fucking like your upbringing. Dude, you were into like this whole like Conan and dragons and mermaids and stuff, right? You just gotta accept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know? Oh no, no, no. No, no, no. You are not allowed to not know Dragon's Lair and claim any 80s cred whatsoever. We're going to fix this. Is this 80s edits? No, dude. This, this is hard. Old... <laughs> no, I, well, I'm see, sorry. Here's the thing, though. I've missed a lot of stuff. Like, how one part of the there 80s. There we go. That. Tell me. Do you not remember <laughs> that? All right. Let me take a look. I just put in Skype. Check it out. I got to go back to my Skype. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, nope. You don't Wait, remember. Kinda. What? Was it in like a cartoon movie? It was. That's fucking Dragon's Lair. See, you don't okay, get more okay. 80s than okay. that before it All becomes right. the 70s. All right. So the, here's the thing. Did that come out in the actual 80s? Yes. Actual that, 80s. I have an explanation. And I have an explanation oh. that will suit you. Hold on. All I gotta right. fix your Skype because right. it's all messed up now. All right, all so, right. So, um, like all I said, I spent I didn't move here until 1990. I never I didn't move to the United States until 1990. That was the exact year I moved here. So I have different pop culture than you. Oh, so you were. Like, where were did you, you grow up on City and okay. Sweep? I grew up in England. Say that again. Did you grow up on City and Sweep? No, because you're American. No. That's the best again. <laughs> America's cool, dude. I'm not going to lie. America's awesome. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe you don't know the Dragon Slayer. I don't. I missed a lot of stuff. Oh, oh man. I was really happy because my favorite thing at the time we moved here was Count Duckula. And you guys I had it. I love Count Duckula. You guys didn't have any okay. of my favorite shows, like Super Ted, any of that when I got here, but Duckula was on Nickelodeon. I was like, I right, did, I'm going to I was be about okay. to say, I did because I had Nickelodeon. I watched the shit out of Count Duckula. I love I Duckula. I love that show. Duckula. Count yeah. Duckula. 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 <laughs>